welcome to this video on Edexcel Topic 10, Equilibrium 1. My name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and basically this video we're going to do a quick overview of Topic 10 um, and specifically for Edexcel, like I say, it's all to do with Equilibrium. Um, the whole part of this video is basically for revision, it gives you an idea of um, what you need to know for Edexcel. Um, also, these um, slides that I'm using here that I've made, um, you can purchase them. If you just click on the description box and the link there, you can get a hold of them there. Um, really good value for money, um, a great supplement to your revision, and um, will really help you get that top grade um, that, you, that you deserve as well. So it's all, like I say, it's all specific for Edexa. So and here are the points, this is quite a short topic, this equilibrium. Uh, here are the uh, points from the um, syllabus uh, taken from the Edexcel spec to uh, basically this, um, this PowerPoint will address them points. Okay, let's have a look at reversible reactions. So reversible reactions are where reactions can go forward and backwards. So we represent it with this funny harpoon shaped arrow. Uh, you can see we've got one going right, one going left, and that means it's reversible. So for example, A and B will react to form C and D and vice versa. So you can see that we can plot this as a graph and the forward reaction initially, the reactants are used up, um, but then slow as their concentration drops. So you can see here, this is for reactants. So initially loads of reactants react really readily. They all react and it goes steeply and then it curves and it flattens out towards the end um, because it's obviously a lot slower. If we look at it in terms of products though, because we could look at it in terms of products, you can see that initially it starts off um, in terms of products, um, it starts off the concentration increases, obviously this is the backwards reaction, this is the amount of product that's being produced, and uh, the amount of product produced is really quick initially, um, and then it slows as the amount of reactants, are, uh, the concentration decreases. So this is just the opposite way, so the concentration of these will obviously increase. Now, at this point, you can see the curves, both curves, are starting to flatten out. Um, this is where the rate of the forward reactions equals the rate of the backwards reaction. Uh, and basically, we call this a dynamic equilibrium. Uh, this is where the concentration of each substance remains constant. Now, you've got to be really, really careful with your wording here, with your terminology. Don't get this confused with um, the idea that this is not the same as the amount of reactant and product, okay? We're not saying that the amount of reactant and product is the same, we're saying that the concentration of each of the substances remains constant, okay? So they're not changing. And this is equilibrium. You can see we don't have the same amount of reactant and product. We've got less reactant than we do product at equilibrium. However, the amounts of each of them are remaining constant because they'll flatline. So that's really, really important. Don't get these two confused. Okay, so these only happen in closed systems. That just means that, obviously, you've got a reaction. Imagine you've got a reaction in here and it's reacting. We put a lid on it. Uh, it basically stops any reactants or products from escaping from the container. Because, obviously, this will have an effect on equilibrium. So, we just basically keep them contained within here. Okay, so let's have a look at Le Chatelier's principle. Now, Le Chatelier developed a principle where he stated what would happen if we change conditions in equilibrium reaction. And here's the very fine chap or himself. So this is Le Chatelier. And basically he came up with this principle and he said, um, if a reaction at equilibrium is subjected to a change in pressure, temperature, or concentration, the position of equilibrium will move to counteract the change. Okay, so if the change in condition results in equilibrium shifting to the left, we make more reactants. So let's say, um, obviously, um, we, we do a change, we put a change upon it, we'll look at some of the changes in a minute, but let's say if that forces equilibrium to the left, we make more reactants, in this case it would be hydrogen and nitrogen, but if um, the change results in it shifting to the right, we actually make more products. Okay, so it's very important to notice about the reactants and products bit. Okay, so let's have a look at Lichetillier's principle in terms of changing concentration. Now what I've done is I've put, uh, we've put Lichetillier at the top there just to remind you of what his rule was, okay? So if we increase the concentration of a reactant or product, the equilibrium will shift to try and reduce the concentration um, and basically the opposite will happen if the concentration is decreased, okay? So um, this only works in homogeneous equilibrium. You'll see this quite a lot. All of these are the same, okay? So basically that means the reactant and products are in the same state. So if we increase the concentration of hydrogen, um, equilibrium will shift to the right. 
to use it up and to reduce the concentration and more NH3 will be produced. So let's have a look. You can see here we're going to increase the concentration of hydrogen. We put more of this in equilibrium will move to try and remove it. So that means using up and shifting to produce more product. So equilibrium will shift to the right. If we increase the concentration of ammonia at this time, which is NH3, equilibrium will shift to the left to use it up. So it's just the opposite. And we'll actually get more hydrogen and more nitrogen produced. You can see it in this one here. So more of these reactants are produced if we increase the amount of ammonia. Okay, so really, really important. Okay, let's have a look at pressure now. Okay, so if we increase the pressure, the equilibrium will shift to try and reduce the pressure. And they, you see, you're getting this kind of theme here. Okay, again, this only works with homogeneous equilibria. So if we increase the pressure of equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium, so if we increase the pressure of reactant, the equilibrium will shift to the side with the fewest number of gas particles. Okay, and this will reduce the pressure. We get more ammonia is going to be produced. Now you can see here, obviously, all of this is gas because it's homogeneous. We've got four molecules of gas on the left two molecules of gas on the right. So increasing the pressure will shift to the side with the fewest number of gas particles, which is to the right. And so that means we'll produce more ammonia. Obviously, if we do it the other way around, um, so if we decrease the pressure, equilibrium will shift to the side with the most number of gas particles. This was to increase the pressure. So effectively, we get more nitrogen and hydrogen being produced because we've got four moles of gas here and only two on this side. So equilibrium will shift to the left to increase that pressure. Okay, let's have a look at the changing temperature. So if we increase the temperature, the equilibrium will shift to try and reduce the temperature. So the opposite will happen if the temperature is decreased. Again, all this is only in homogeneous equilibria. So if we increase the temperature, okay, equilibrium will shift in the endothermic direction. Now this one's a little bit trickier compared to the other ones, okay? And this will reduce the temperature. And in this case, we get more nitrogen and hydrogen produced. So you can see here this reaction going forward you can see here is exothermic it's a negative enthalpy value so going forward is exothermic going backwards has got to be endothermic whenever you see this number written next door to an equation like this this is always referring to the forward reaction so the forward reaction is exothermic so increasing the temperature will mean that the equilibrium will try and do the opposite which is decrease the temperature so it'll shift in the endothermic direction which in this case is going this way to the left and so therefore we'll produce more nitrogen and hydrogen. Now obviously if we do the opposite, if we decrease the temperature, it will try and shift in the direction where it can increase it. That is in the exothermic direction. In this case, this is the forward reaction. So we get more ammonia being produced and less hydrogen and nitrogen being produced. So it's all about looking at these numbers on the right hand side. This tells you what the forward reaction is. Okay, catalysts. So catalysts have no effect on the position of equilibria. Okay, very, very important. They have no effect. A catalyst will speed up the rate of the forward and the backward reaction equally. There's no preference for the catalyst. Okay, so it speeds up both the forward and uh, forward and reverse reactions equally. So a catalyst will speed up the rate at which equilibrium is reached, but it won't have any effect on yield. Okay, really important. The catalysts do affect rate. Okay, they speed up the rate at which something happens. They have no effect on the position of equilibrium though. Okay, make sure you know that. Okay, so let's have a look. Making ethanol. So um, this is just a specific example. There's, um, we're going to make this obviously from uh, ethene. You can see here this is ethene reacting with water and that will form ethanol. And you can see the forward reaction is exothermic because we've got a negative value there. So this is an exothermic reaction. The pressure is 60 atmospheres, the temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, and the catalyst we're going to use for this one is phosphoric acid. Make sure you know these conditions for this particular reaction. Okay, the forward reaction is exothermic because we know we've got a negative value here. Okay, so decreasing the temperature will mean that equilibrium shifts to the right, producing more ethanol. So that's good, isn't it? Yep, so we decrease the temperature, we'll get more ethanol. However, Okay, the temperature means we get a lower rate of reaction. It's going to be really, really slow. That isn't very good, um, you know, because we're going to take ages. It's fine producing nice, good quality ethanol, but it's going to take us two weeks to make it. Um, then it's there's no not really much point in making it because it's going to take too long. So we have to reach a compromise. The compromise is 300 degrees Celsius. And the compromise here in this particular instance is between yield, which is the amount of product produced, 
and rate, which is how quickly it's produced. Pressure. Now, a high pressure means that equilibrium shifts to the right to produce more ethanol. Okay, we've got less moles of gas on the right. Remember, as you can see here, we've only got one mole here. We've got two on the left. So equilibrium will shift to the right to reduce the pressure. Uh, and also, high pressure increases the rate as well. So you think, well, that's surely got to be a good thing. We're getting more product and we're getting it really quickly. Okay, however, <laughs> there's always a but. Uh, however, we've got high pressure environments are really expensive. Okay, you need really thick um containers you need high pressure you need equipment to withstand this high pressure uh, the pipes etc so it's gonna be really expensive so the compromise in this situation is is actually the compromise of yield and speed and cost okay so um we've got to balance that up obviously ethanol isn't the most expensive chemical to sell so we've got to make sure it's economically viable to make it in the first place make sure you know them compromises Okay, we can um, quantify uh, equilibrium, and we use something called Kc. This is the equilibrium constant. Now, this is for a homogeneous reaction, okay? So the Kc expression can be worked out from molar concentration in a reaction. So let's have a look here. So the molar values in front of each species are powers in the Kc expression. You can see here that we've got two lots of A and reacting with one lot of B, forming two lots of C and one lot of D, okay? Or when I say lot, this should be moles. Okay, and we write our KC expression. Now you can see here that the, the numbers in front of these, the molar values, represent the powers that sit next to them in the KC expression, as you can see here. So we've got two lots of A, there it is, and we've got two lots of C, and there it is. So they represent the power. Now, products always go on the top of a KC expression, and reactants always go on the bottom. And the square brackets basically mean the concentration of, so how much of that we've got, so concentration. Okay, really important. Okay, so what we might get you to do is to write out the KC expression for a reaction. So we've got a reaction here. This is homogeneous. All the um, reactants and products in the same state, so they're all in the gas state. So um, basically, when we've got it homogeneous, we put all the reactants and products in the final KC expression. You'll see the heterogeneous one next. Slight, slightly different. It's not too difficult, though. So all we do is we put products over reactants. So the expression in this case is SO3 2, because we've got two of them, divided by O2 and SO2 squared, okay, which is that because we've got two of them, and that is basically it, that's the expression. So you put everything in there if it's homogeneous. But what if it's heterogeneous? Okay, so we're gonna look at the heterogeneous one. Now, what we're looking at here, here's our equation, we brought this equation back in, and this time B is a solid. Okay, so we put B in there, which is solid. So um, again, the, if they've got powers in front of them, if we've got a number of moles in front of them, we put powers in front of them. But because these are all one to one to one, then we don't put any uh, powers on here. Now the big difference, obviously we've got products and reactants as normal, and the solids, um, uh, sorry, the products and reactants on the top, so we've got the top here and the reactants in the bottom. But notice the solid B is missing, okay? Solids don't uh, solids and pure liquids for that matter as well they're not included in a KC expression okay so we emit them this is heterogeneous because we've got different states in this equation we've got gas and a solid and a gas and a gas so that makes it different so solids we don't include so let's have a look at an example let's write the KC expression for this reaction carbon plus oxygen forming carbon dioxide it's heterogeneous because we've got a solid a gas and a gas so um like I say, when we're writing out our KC um, expression, we don't include solids and pure liquids in the final KC. This is because these pretty much remain constant throughout, throughout the reaction. The concentrations don't change because they're solids. Okay, So we don't include them. So in this case, the expression is going to be this. Carbon dioxide divided by O2. We emit the carbon. We don't include it. So it's pretty much straightforward, as long as you know what you're looking out for. Just be really vigilant for these state symbols, though. Okay, and so what affects the value of Kc? So we need to know um, the effect of catalyst, uh, and basically they don't affect it. So when we're talking about what affects the value of Kc, we're saying that catalysts don't. Um, so adding a catalyst has no effect on the value of Kc. Um, remember, a catalyst speeds up the forward and reverse reaction, um, so it doesn't actually have any effect on the amount of yield. Um, and basically all a catalyst will do is it just speeds up the rate at which equilibrium is established. So it wouldn't have any effect on the value of Kc. So it's really important you need to know the effect of a catalyst on the value of Kc, which is no effect. So, yeah, okay. 
And um, that's it. That's basically a quick overview of um, LXL uh, Topic 10, Equilibrium 1. Um, please show your support for this channel. Um, it's all free, as you can see. There's no charge for any of this, but uh, all I ask is that you just subscribe to the channel and watch the videos and share them. If you just click on the link, uh, the little circle in the middle there, and subscribe to the channel and get all the updates on the videos that we put up on here as well. Um, also, just a quick reminder that you can purchase these slides as well. Um, if you'd like your own copy of them, uh, just click on the link in the description box. They're great value for money. You can get the whole AS um, uh, slides um, and you can get them cheaper as well because they're all bundled together. They're cheaper than the individual ones. Um, but um, feel free to go and have a look at them. But that's it now. Bye-bye.